All right, so everybody knows this is worth a lot more than money right now. So I figure I'll try to duplicate it. It's as easy as just doing like, okay, and then we just duplicate it once. There we go, and now we just take it. Okay, that's the first one, and now just the second one. There we have it, so now we have two toilet paper rolls. Let's try that again with one, and then we duplicate it. It's not working. Oh! Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Yazlea and welcome to the creatorgalaxy.com space station. Here in space we are experimenting with intergalactic filmmaking skills and visual effects. In today's video we're going to see how to duplicate infinite toilet paper because it seems very important nowadays. But before we start this video I quickly want to thank Elgato. Elgato gave me these awesome key light airs uh, which you can see right here in the back here. Uh, there I have actually two on my desk and they are perfect for streamers so when you're live streaming you have a perfect perfect evenly lit face. Um, these are like small soft boxes for on your desk. So if you're doing any type of recordings on your desk or at your desk, uh, this is really the way to go because they don't take much space and they're super convenient and simplistic. You can change the intensity of the lights and the color temperature with your app or with your computer. So that's really easy. And for me now, of course, for, with this angle, it's kind of a little bit different, but this helps as like separating myself from the background. Maybe it's a little bit too intense towards the camera, um, but this would be better if I would be doing a live stream with my camera right here, uh, I would have a perfect evenly lit face, uh, but I just wanted to uh, yeah, try them out and see how it works. Um, but they look very cool and they're very durable. So I would definitely encourage you to check them out if you have any sort of recordings like that to do. I will put a link in the description below and let's continue with our video. So for this video today, I provided you with all the footage. I would link in the description below. I will send you four clips and also the 3D scene that I will be doing um, as some people might not have Cinema 4D or Octane Render Engine. So basically when you want to record something similar to this, uh, you want to be with two people. That's really the easiest way to work around it because otherwise uh, you're just not going to get your shot as stable as, as you want. And basically there is not much to this. Uh, except for a perfect placed cut and just trying to stay as still as possible while you're recording it. So how do you record it? You take a tripod, you set up your camera with the correct composition. Um, and then you want to take a toilet paper roll and you act like you're going to push it in your computer. While you do that, you stay still as still as possible. You have your friend or your girlfriend in this case, because uh, Enzo is not here because of this entire situation. He's working from home. Enzoe, I miss you. My girlfriend has to help me that she doesn't understand anything. <laughs> I stay as still as possible and then here my girlfriend comes and she opens the Photoshop v uh, photo. Which takes a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, she's not a <laughs> Photoshop expert. So she helped me recording this video and then she takes out the paper roll and then I try to keep it still as possible and then I smash it in there, boom. Okay, so the paper roll is now in the computer. And now all we have to do is just drag this into Adobe Premiere Pro and kind of go to the position where I smash it in. But the most important thing is that you're still in movement so that you still see that motion blur. So like right now we see motion blur, I kind of throw it. Okay, that's still good. Here it's not good anymore. So we really have to cut it here. So I'm going to press C on the keyboard and make a cut. I'm actually going to hold shift and make a cut so it's also affecting the audio. And then I want to move forward until uh, my girlfriend placed the photo there and took it out of my hand. And when I continue my act. So that's around here. And also I want to be in like a next motion, so something like this. So right here, what I'm going to press is Q on the keyboard and that will just trim my video towards the end of the uh, previous video. And then we should have something like this. So already it's looking pretty good. So what I'll do is I will select uh, these videos and then right click and nest it. And what I'm going to be using is actually one of our preset packs, uh, which you can get on our website. Actually, I'll put a link in the description below where you can go and get them. Uh, so I'll open up my presets and it's called TC Camera Shake Preset. 
uh, 2.0. Um, so I'm going for a medium shake and maybe a medium shot right here. And I'm just going to drag that onto my shot like so. And immediately you're, you're going to see a little zoom, but that's because now it's not a tripod shot anymore. By the way, it's also very important to shoot it on a tripod because otherwise you're definitely going to see your cut. And so there we go. And actually to just uh, fix my head a little bit, I will also add the transform effect and drag that on my clip and go to the effect controls and just position it up a little bit. Okay, so let's play this. So now we have camera shake on my video. It's already looking pretty cool. And just because of that shake, it's already looking continuous because this shake is smooth and there is nothing like a cut that you can see. And now if you even want to do it better than this, uh, what you can also do is open up that nested comp. And here we're going to the project manager and create a new adjustment layer. Click OK and drag this layer into your timeline just above your video, make it as big as your video. And then again, we want to apply that transform effect. So we're going to the cut here and like right a little bit before we're going to like two frames before I'm doing this with the arrows, I'm going to click on the stopwatch for position and scale and then go two frames forward or actually four or five frames forward. And I'm just going to zoom in like 125 and also reposition it a little bit to make it look like I'm actually with my camera going to and zoom to the action that we're doing there. So that's uh, what we're trying to achieve here. Then once we are there, we're going to move forward a little bit just so we keep that zoom for a little while and then create two new keyframes for there. And then a little bit further away in time, I would create uh, just reset these two values. So basically now you have something like this. Okay. So you can make this as long as you want and kind of fade it out later. It's all like you want. That's okay. So now it's important to, of course, make it as smooth as possible. So for this one, we're going to select the first keyframes, right click um, temporal interpolation and go for a ease, um, ease out. And then for these, we're going to click on temporal interpolation temporal interpolation, um, auto Bezier, and I'm gonna do the same for this ones or these ones. And there we go. And then for the last ones, we're going to make a uh, ease in here. So now if we're going to look at this, it's going to look a little bit smoother. So now the most important thing is to uncheck use composition shutter angle and go in between these keyframes, there's where you will see most of the uh, effect applying and change the shutter angle to something like 180, see how that looks, uh, or increase it to 360 if you want it even more pronounced to the motion blur. And that way you're going to create motion blur while you zoom in and we're going to make sure the motion blur is like most prominent on the moment of the cut. So that's like right here. And that's going to kind of blend it in even better. And you barely see it in action. And maybe you think that this zoom kind of looks fake, but if we now go back to the other composition where we apply that camera shake on top of the zoom, it's just going to blend in very well. So we're going to check this out now. And it's, it's kind of seamless. So that's a really cool transition. The next one is basically to take it out. So I just did the same thing. Let's bring it in quickly here. I go here. Let's try to stay in motion. So this one or this one, I, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm going to take this one and I'm going to make a cut there and then go to the position where um, my girlfriend takes off uh, the image and then places another toilet paper in my hand. And also again, just in motion, we're going to press Q on the keyboard and now we have, uh, there we go. And basically you repeat the process of the previous clip in order to make this more seamless or just try to re-record it as many times as you need to make it as perfect as you want. So now we have this third one and in the third one we did something funny that like uh, my computer freezes and they all kind of bulk up and then they explode um, towards me which is a really cool effect. 
Um, so how I've done it here is I act like something is going wrong with my computer. Obviously, I didn't have like a video on my computer playing uh, that was adding all these toilet papers. Basically, this was my video right here. So, so nothing happened actually. So I'm going to drag that into a new composition or sequence. Uh, I'm used to working with After Effects, so that's why composition. We also have some kind of issues when you switch between the software, like you mix up things. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so here, when, when I say like, oh damn, it should start. So what I've done is basically I recorded another scene where I just duplicated them manually and you can see it's taking very long. Yeah, it's like 25 seconds where I'm just duplicating um, these toilet paper rolls. So all I've done is remove the audio part, right click, see, uh, speed sequence, maybe to like 500. And now we have like four seconds where it's adding it very quickly. So I'm going to copy this or actually drag it to the third one here and bring it on top here, just where I say, oh damn. So right here it should start. And then I'm going to click on that video, go to the effects controls and then with the pen tool, I'm just going to make a mask around my screen. So you can zoom out if you want, just so you can see it a little bit better. And then of course, uh, feather it a little bit like 25 or 50, uh, try to see that it's looking all right. But now we have me reacting to it and my screen going crazy. And here they should explode. I've jumped into Adobe After Effects, it's not a big deal. Um, but I actually exported my scene. I brought it into Cinema 4D as a background. I also use it as a sky to have the same reflection. I modeled a toilet paper roll and then I used a uh, emitter that used that object, that toilet paper roll as um, a particle. And then I burst out plenty of particles, which were in this case, my toilet paper. And then I rendered this out with an alpha background. So with a transparent background, I placed that on top of my video. So then we just import and um, we're actually importing an image sequence because when you're exporting 3D, uh, it's better to export as an image sequence because it can crash, it takes longer time. So it's just more stable if you export image sequences. So I'm going to import that. Make sure that you just check here, image sequence, open it up and then you will see it's going to import it as a video file and we have these toilet paper rolls. I'm going to drag that on top of my video right here, um, maybe a little bit earlier. And there we go, so it's already kind of matching up. And then of course, all you can do is add some color grade uh, to that and play around with that to make it look good, but it's already looking pretty cool. Create a new adjustment layer, apply that on top here. And with the transform effect, we can click on position, scale, and maybe even rotation, but I'm not going to do that for now. I'm kind of zoom in a little bit in general. So I'm going to uncheck this keyframe, just 110, create a new keyframe and then like, kind of move it like this. And now you have a small camera shake. Uh, then lastly, I just applied a entire color grade on top of the entire thing. So you can do that with, again, an adjustment layer. So I'm just going to do that with this adjustment layer and delete the transform for now. So we're just going to apply our last creative LUT. So I'm going to browse for one. And again, I'm going to be using one of ours something like this. And then we can also add a little bit of a curves to bring in some contrast there. And there we go. So now we have um, a little grade on top of that. And that's also going to match uh, the toilet paper because now we added a grade where you can see a little bit more greenish colors. You can also see that in the toilet paper. And that's going to blend a 3D scene uh, a lot better with the original scene. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more and check out our website. We have a bunch of awesome things to offer, like the loot pack that we just showed you as well. Uh, so definitely go and check it out. And it would also support the channel if you go and buy something from our website. So apart from that, I definitely want to thank my girlfriend here um, because Enzoe wasn't here to help me run and she did. So if you want to introduce yourself to the audience, come and say hi. <laughs> She has been a really big help in creating these videos. Hello. And now she's sitting next to me also editing videos. No, it's awkward, right? <laughs>